know what you're thinking. Some 10th grader in jeans talking about Mars? How is he qualified? But trust me, I've done my research. Let's talk about food for a second. Food is the essence of life. Every species that has ever lived on this planet needs some form of food to survive. I know that as a growing 16-year-old, I think about food way too much. But that's besides the point. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way we all think about food. Whether that means going out to eat less or eating more of it. But today, I don't want to talk about how COVID-19 has changed the way we think about food. I don't even want to talk about food on this planet. I want to go to Mars. Now, many of you guys have probably heard of Mars and how it could be this backup planet in the case of a catastrophic event on Earth. And well, I'm here to tell you all that this figment of your imagination could very, very soon become a reality. Now, don't worry, I'm not saying there's going to be a catastrophic event on Earth soon. But in a, within a decade, we will have humans on Mars, possibly even small colonies. That's amazing. But the question remains, if we can't even adequately feed everyone on Earth, how can we do so on Mars? Now, this is definitely a complicated topic, with scientific implications well beyond my knowledge. But let's break it down a little bit. Let's look at the journey of a single corn seed, and its journey from a seed to a sprout to a full-grown stalk of corn on Mars. Now, this question is even harder to answer than you might think, because very, very little can grow inside of Mars soil, also called regolith. Now, regolith is very, very hard to grow things in because it has toxic particles, toxic salts. So, for those of you who, think, who have had the idea that Oh, can't we just grow it in the greenhouse? You guys are very smart. Growing food in, con in controlled greenhouses has its benefits. Doing so would allow us to modify the temperature, the humidity, and the nutrients our corn seed will receive. Now, remember what I said our corn seed will most likely have to be grown in a greenhouse? Well, that's because recently, Scientists have been able to grow foods like radish, lettuce, and salt grass in regolith or Mars soil like substances found in volcanic debris. So it is possible that our corn could just grow in the microdust of our neighboring planet. But the question remains how can we grow food on a planet with no running water, no existing plants? and no suitable agricultural conditions. Well, we could just use hydroponics, which is a system in which we can use nutrient-rich salt, gravel, and liquid to create a, a sort of thing called compost tea, uh, in which we use beneficial microorganisms from human waste products to act as fertilizer for soil. If any of you guys have seen The Martian, Mark Warburg's movie, then many of you know he used him and his crew's species to act as beneficial microorganisms, which he could use as fertilizer for his potatoes. Now, there is a massive problem with this, though. And that's that corn is absolutely terrible at growing in greenhouses. It's horrible. It's way too hard to manage, and there's no way we can replicate it on a large scale because of the amount of space it takes up. So we still have this question of how can we grow food on Mars? We still have this question. And recently, a leading idea has become to turn that regolith, that Mars soil, into usable and nutrient-rich soil like we have here on Earth. Now, I know this is a very, very complicated topic, and I can't address everything right now. But I'll break down some of the main ideas for all of you. So, the first thing that's absolutely essential in doing so is removing toxic particles, the most toxic of which are toxic salts called perchlorides. Now, 
Think of porch lights as those things similar to those white beads at the bottom of the seaweed can your mom told you never to eat, no matter what. So, we kind of do need to remove them. Because if you eat corn that has been grown in perch lights, lung, ca lung cancer will soon follow. So we kind of do need to remove them, I guess. So, once you remove these perch lights, we can start to grow corn in regularly. And you might ask, what's the reason for all this soil manipulation, adding this, taking away that, and that's because corn and other plants are very nutrient-specific plants. They need very specific doses of hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, calcium, iron to be able to grow optimally. And one of the places with those conditions, those optimal conditions for growing corn, is a state called Georgia. Both of my parents are from Georgia. And I remember maybe I was six, seven, eight years old, driving into the Georgian countryside, and all I could see, miles and miles around, was corn and okra plants, another popular plant that grows in Georgia. And when I was coming up with ideas for this, I sort of wondered, would the equivalent of me driving through those cornfields in 100, 200 years be some kids, some teenagers flying high-tech drones over thousands of greenhouses on Mars? Like, that's crazy. But let's go back to our soil. So once we've removed these toxic salts, now we can do something that humans have been doing for 500 years. If, it's too, if our soil is too acidic, add some pulverized lime. Too basic, sulfur. This isn't a complicated process. This is the easy part. So now we've done everything we need to. We can plant our corn seed and watch it grow. Right? Wait, right? Oh, that's right. We literally don't know. We don't know if this will work. This has been a concept that has been theorized by scientists for decades. But we've never actually been able to test it in regolith. We know so little about how to grow food on Mars, yet we plan to colonize before people of my generation are due to hit their midlife crisis. And this is the point I'm trying to make. We're planning to colonize Mars so soon, but we don't know how to grow food long term there? Scientists have been experimenting with regolith or Mars-like soil for decades. But that's just the thing. It's regolith-like. It's not the real deal. We don't know how this will behave when we mass produce it. We don't know how it will actually behave on Mars. Maximilian Ritchel, the commander for the Mars Desert Station, has said in multiple interviews, what we know is very little, and what we know, we know nothing about. And this just goes to highlight how little we know about growing food on a planet we soon plan to call. Aside from this, it's extremely hard to justify researching, spending billions of dollars researching how to grow food on another planet when thousands of people die every day from starvation on Earth. Many people see this research as privileged or the upper class giving up on Earth. One of my favorite quotes surrounding this topic comes from environmentalist Terry Swerigan who says, we are living on Earth as if we have another planet to go to. We are living on Earth as if we have another planet to go to. This just highlights how much, how, how we continue to research growing food on Mars when we can save Earth. But aside from this, it doesn't mean that there aren't new up and coming opportunities for scientists to gain information on how we can actually turn Mars soil into nutrient-rich soil like we have on Earth. A 2026 mission is bound to, Mar to go to Mars and collect Mars rocks and regolith which scientists can experiment on. So, will our corn seed grow? Will it not? 
I don't know. You certainly don't know. Scientists don't even know. Only the future generations will know. And until then, we will have to wait. And we'll have to go back to the future. Thank you.